Uh, today's message will be about the parable of the sower. Everybody say the parable of the sower. The the growing the future. Look at somebody say, I'm growing, I'm growing the, future. the future. That's the parable of the sower. Thank you. What are you sowing? I can ask that question. I'm not sure I'm going to get an answer, but I can ask you, what are you growing? Some of y'all might be growing tomatoes, potatoes, mashed potatoes, and some of y'all might be growing orchids and roses, and some of y'all got what they call a green thumb. All right? And if we could grow uh, money like we grow plants, we'd all be rich. Yes. At least some of us anyway. But there's a teaching in the seed. Yes. Look at somebody and say, there's a, there's a teaching in the seed. In the seed. What are you sowing? Amen. It's an everyday thing, you know. You might not know, but every day you're sowing, you know. Yes. Every day you're planting seeds. Yes. And there are all kinds of seeds, good and bad. And some seeds take root. Yeah. Now, let me just say something. When we plant a seed, we want good result from what we plant. Ain't that right? Amen. But if scientists really want to learn something about botany or plant agriculture, they need to study weeds. <laughs> and they ain't talking about the kind that you smoke because we already know the government didn't pass that law. I ain't saying it's right. I'm just saying they didn't pass the law. And by their passing the law, you see how some of these fools then, then took advantage of it. Oh, come on, somebody. Why you call him a fool, Pastor? Because a fool is saying it's hard. There is no God. Come on, now. Come on somebody. Amen. We see in chapter 4 of St. Ma uh, Mark, uh, chapter 4, we see that, that, that Jesus uh, began to teach them some very deep lessons about the parable of the sword. You see, sowing is important uh, because uh, Paul told the church, uh, it doesn't matter who planteth or who watereth. All right, now. As long as God gives the increase. Yeah. Look at somebody and say, as long, as long as God is giving the increase. Yeah. It don't matter who planting yeah. or who watering. Yeah. Some, some say, I, I'm, I, I belong to Apollos. And others say, I belong to Paul. But Paul said, it really don't matter because God is in charge. You got to get it in your head that you and I are sowers. We're, we're, we're like John and the apple seed. We're, we're just sowing God's seeds everywhere. Come on, somebody. Some people on this earth, men that don't want to take care of their children, they sow and seed with this woman, that woman, this woman, that woman all over the place. And they ain't taking care of nothing. They call themselves a father, and they ain't really a daddy. Oh, you don't want to hear this, but I'm going to get back to that in a minute. I just, I just want to break the ground with you. You see, our hearts are like, are like the earth. You know, we can have a stony heart, but, but God told Ezekiel, I'm going to take out that stony heart, and I'm going to give him a heart of flesh, one in which I can take and mold and shape. And when I finish with them, I'm going to be their God. And they're going to be my people. On, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be no other God, people, but the living God. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 Get it in your head today that we are growing the future. Look at somebody say, I'm growing the future. I'm growing the future. Every seed that you plant, you like me, I ain't going to do much bragging about this, but in my family tree, we got both fruit and nuts growing. <laughs> I don't know about some of y'all, but in my family tree, we got both growing on the same tree. And I ain't talking about a tree that grows out in the yard. I'm talking about uh, the family tree. Amen. Come on, somebody. You look down there and say he's as nutty as they come. Now, maybe the family looking at me as a nut, too, but, but that's all right. I'm a growing nut. I, I'm a growing fruit. Come on, somebody. And you don't know it, but when you look at somebody's family tree, you don't know whether you're going to pull a fruit or a nut off that tree. Oh, come on, somebody. Uh, where I'm from, I understand, Junior, the, the further back up in the woods you go, the more nuts you find. You know, on the, front, on the perimeter, you don't see much. But when you get back up in the woods, come on, somebody. Well, you know, I, I, before, before I get deep in my message, I, I was thinking about my, my brother, my, my dear brother. I, I never met him, and I read about him over the years. And, and, and uh, you know, as I was studying, preparing this message, I had to go get my agriculture book. 
See, a pastor got to have all kinds of books. You see, when you preach a sermon, you don't know what, in what direction God going to take you. So I, I, I picked up my Time Secret of Genius magazine. Uh, it, it's a book uh, that I got, and it discovered the, the nature of brilliancy and the secret of geniuses. And they got everybody from Serena Williams. That's all right. You ain't, they got Shakespeare. Uh -huh. They got Jobs. He's dead and gone. Uh, Epps, uh, was it Einstein. Come on, somebody. And there's a whole bunch of them in there. And it's amazing that when, and I was just showing Mariah back there. She didn't know it, but, but even Van Gogh was a schizophrenic. Uh, he was bipolar. He had some real uh, HDD uh, problems. Come on, somebody. Uh, he thought that they were trying to poison him, but he was one of, uh, along with, 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 with uh, Michelangelo and along with those who uh, painted great pictures, he was classified as one of the greatest artists that ever lived. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he had some real issues, yeah. and he thought people were trying to poison him. Well, I didn't want to talk too much about them, but I did want to talk about my friend, uh, George Washington Carver. Are uh, y'all with me on this? I know Black History Month is next month, but let me, it, it has a lot to do with my message today. Come on, somebody. Uh, I got interested in him, a man with a president name, but on the end, it says Carver. And I got to think, maybe he know how to cut people. Come on, somebody. <laughs> but I realized that this man uh, never got married, never had no children, and he had a devoted relationship with God. But he was the original, if you don't mind me saying it this way, he was the original plant manager. He dealt with botany. He dealt with plants and agriculture. And he understood the knowledge of fertilization. Are y'all with me on this? I got so deep and I said, I didn't know this man with his heavy. He was man close to 90 years of age. And even as smart as he was, he didn't have all the fancy chemical uh, laboratories that you see today. Uh, even Ford, uh, the owner of Ford uh, Motor Company, offered him a six figure to give up what he was doing. And he didn't refuse. He refused to give up what God gave him. Uh, what, what, what I'm trying to say is that this scientific innovation uh, ever appeared under much inhospitable uh, circumstances. Why? Because uh, this man attended, this man in his early years was born a, a slave on a farm in Missouri uh, near the end of the Civil War. Carver was a black man in the Jim Crow South who single-handedly refocus and revitalize the American farm. He, he pioneered, listen carefully, he pioneered the soil analysis, the crop management, and the control of plant diseases and insects. Carver Research, he was a strong advocate of the product in the ground, and he provided alternatives. And one of the biggest alternatives that he provided was the peanut. Are y'all with me on this? And from the peanut, he used from the peanut and the soybean and the pecan, speaking of a Mississippi mud pie with peanuts, I want you to understand it was good. Come on, somebody. For the farmer who laid, laid fallow from the uncultivated because of cotton, he was able to take the soil and understood the nature of the soil and be able to fertilize it, understood the nature that, that the soil needed seed. 16 substances in order to make anything grow. Are y'all with me on this? He was so bombarded that in his day he should have got an Academy Award. He should have got a Nobel Prize. Because even today, from the peanut, he developed 300 products that they're using in space today, and they're using on the space shuttle. People don't realize because of his inventions. Are y'all with me on this? Uh, you know, I'm preaching about a sermon now because he had to get his knowledge from somewhere and he went over into the book of Mark and he went over to the book of Matthew and he realized that the God we serve knew all about agriculture. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. You, you, wait a minute, Pastor. What are you trying to say? See, don't get me started because this man was so knowledgeable. He was just so humble that God gave him the insight I began to study this man's life, and he realized that with, if you just grow a plant, you might get a percentage 
out of that plant. But when you add compost, when you add, uh, when you add fertilization, come on somebody, you can go from one to three per crop. And if you know how to cultivate the land, because you see, before you can put a seed in the ground, you got to break up the ground. You got to plow it and break it up. Sometimes I got to bust you up with the word of God. Sometimes I got to bust your heart open that God's word can penetrate everything that you're going through. Because sometimes we're so caught up in what's happening in our life that we begin to harden our heart due to the circumstances that might come up. Oh, you don't want to hear this kind of preaching today. But I'm going to get on your nerve in a minute because some of y'all need some fertilization. Some of y'all need some oxygen. Some of y'all need some hydrogen. Some of y'all need some nutrients. Some of y'all need a little water in your life. Some of y'all need a little air in your life. Come on, somebody. You need to head out and let God get a hold of your life and begin to work with you. When I think about George Washington, he was a part of what they call the Freedom of Hungry campaign. I don't know about you, but I've been hungry before. And peanuts, you know, you know, when I look back at, at our president, Jimmy Carter, he got a hold of this message. Are y'all with me? A president that ran our country got a hold of this George Washington Carver message. understood that cotton would soak up every bit of the nutrients in the earth. That's why a good farmer is not going to plant the same seed in the same plant every year in the same field in order for the nutrients to come back. You got to switch it up. Hey. You and I got to understand that this man fought for the freedom. He was an advocate. He understood what it means to calculate economically. But then when you put fertilizer, when you begin to take the word of God and integrate it in your walk and integrate it in your thoughts and ideas, you begin to see a hundredfold of what God is trying to do. Not only economically, but he understood that if you bought $100 worth of fertilizer, you can get $300 worth of crop. I don't know about you, but when you go to invest in what God got, when you go to invest time and talent and treasure, look at somebody that said time, talent, and treasure. Well, you see, when you go to fertilize and begin to invest in what God has called you to do, you're going to see a return on what you're doing. How many got blessed this week? How many got blessed financially, physically, and emotionally? Come on, somebody. Now, some of y'all don't need no money, but you got some peace of mind. Some of y'all got peace of mind, but you need a little money. And God supplied your needs. You don't have to say amen. I know where you're coming from. This man had old jars and old cans and and they could have fixed him up in a beautiful place in, in the Ford Motor Company, but he was more important than solving some of life's mystery that God gave him. He was so wise that they had to stick him in the book of the secrets of Genesis. <laughs> Come on, somebody. You see, God knew you before you came through your mother's womb. He knew all about you. Ain't that right? And you see, he understood that plant food needed nutrients. They needed oxygen. They need carbon dioxide. Yeah. You see, have it ever dawned on you that when you inhale yeah. oxygen to, to replenish and vitalize your organ, you exhale uh, carbon dioxide? Yeah. And when you exhale carbon dioxide, the plants in your house suck it right up and cultivate that and use it on their leaves yeah. and they go towards the heaven? I'm here to tell you, God will supply all your needs. Yeah. God will take care of whatever you're going through, but you got to give him a chance. Every time you inhale and exhale, God knows all about what you're dealing with. Well, oh my God, Pastor. I mean, you, you, you see, see, you go over to Home Depot and you go into the florist or uh, the department where they got trees. And what, what do you see in the first thing you run in in the corner? Because, see, the world believes in miracle. Because uh, they got a big old bag of miracle grow. Am I talking right? Yes. Did, I, did I hear somebody feel it? Yes. 
Because I want you to understand that they want to get as close to heaven as they get. So they're going to utilize the same thing that church people been using. We're going to use it. And so these plants ain't growing on their own. So in order for you to get a mega crop, a mega blossom on any plant, hey, you got to put some miracle grow. Now, 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 let me just tell you something. Uh, my wife, when I picked her out, come on, somebody, because I had a choice of, a, I had a multiplication problem uh, when I was in Georgia. Come on, somebody. She was with her two girlfriends. You hear me, Minister West? And I had, to, I had to pick her out, and I looked at my wife and said, I, I, want, I want what they call the superlis. Y'all don't know where I'm coming from. The superlis is not just a, a bloom on a flower. It is a top blossom. Okay, okay, okay. In other words, I was looking, and I said, I got to have the top blossom. Everybody said superlis. Superlis, superlis means the top blossom. The top blossom. Okay, okay, okay. Never mind. They, 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 that might have got too deep for some of y'all. What I'm trying to get you to understand is that God wants you to be and have the very best. It might not be the best for this or the best for that one, but it can be the very best for you. You see, God knows what you need. He knows how to meet your needs. And he knows how to meet you when you need your needs. Some folks just settle for anything. But let me get over to Mark, because I want you to understand where Jesus was coming from. Jesus said in chapter 4, verses 1 of St. Mark, and he began to teach by the seaside. Why the seaside? And while he began to teach, there was a great gathering unto him, a great multitude that got so big that he entered into a little ship and he sat in the sea. Everybody say he sat in the sea. That means he was in the boat and he was teaching because when you go to teach, folks got to be sitting down. And the whole multitude was by the sea and on the land. He took and used the acoustics that come off the Sea of Galilee. And he used it for a backdrop of the power of God. Many say if there were thousands that were out there listening to him, how in the world did those that were in the back Heard what he had to say when there were so many and he was so far away. I'm here to tell you, if you really want to hear Jesus, you're going to go out of your way to listen to him. Are y'all with me on this? You see, the people was hungry and they were thirsting after righteousness. And Jesus said, I'm going to fill their cup. I'm going to fill them up. Verse 2 says, and he taught them many things by parables, by mysteries, by stories. And he said unto them in this, in his doctrine, hearken, listen real hard, observe what I say. Behold, there was out, there went out a sword to sow. You read this, you know this. And it came to pass as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And the fowls of the air came and scooped it or devoured it right up. That's what they do. And some fell on stony ground. Where they had not much earth. And immediately it sprung up because they had no depth of earth. Verse 6 says, but when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns. And when the thorn grew up, it choked the word, and it yielded no fruit. Somebody said, Lord, have mercy. And others fell on good ground. Everybody said, good God almighty. Some fell on good grounds. You ought to thank God when you heard the word that your heart was right. 
that your heart was ready to receive it, that your heart was ready to envelop it and ready to live by it. You ought to thank God that it fell on good ground and it yielded uh, fruit that sprang up. Not only did it spring up, but it increased. Not only did it increase, but it brought forth Psalm 30, or uh, Psalm 60, and in some case, some of y'all got a hundredfold. Everything that the enemy took away, everything that the caterpillar, the locusts, everything that the roaches, come on somebody, and every insect that came into your life as a creeping thing, that came in the spirit in the form of Satan, God said, I'm going to give it back. Your health, God going to give back. Now, wait a minute. Every time I preach, 52 messages plus per year come from this podium. You ought to be able to take the word. Use what the word says. Apply it to your everyday life. Use it every area of your life. Don't have no taboo, no secret, no spiritual hang up to what God can do. Are y'all with me on this? Because when you try to keep something secret from God, the devil knows all about it. He's going to try to mess your life up by throwing in a tear. By throwing in something that won't go right. Or something won't live right. Or something won't cause you to get a return on your spiritual investment. Oh my God. You see, let me give you the nature of a seed. A seed that comes from a fruit. After a fruit has been uh, ate up or been used, uh, it has seeds in it. And every seed, in order for it to grow, it first has to be put into the earth, put into the right soil. And that seed has to die. Are y'all with me on this? The word of God will kill everything that's not right with God in your heart and your life if you'll let it take hold. Are y'all with me on this? Whatever you're going through in life, if you let the word speak to your issue, speak to your circumstances, speak to your situation, God will cause that whatever you're going through to dissipate. Wait a minute, Pastor. That seed first has to die. And then word, it had to germinate. Germinate means that will have a hole that holds the precious fruit that is yet to come, has to germinate, the outer core has to die, and the seed has to come forth out of that seed in which the earth has hugged its uh, love around it, and then nature takes its course. What are you saying, Pastor? Well, when you got that seed to germinate, it first has to develop a root. A root takes hold of the earth. And in the midst of that root, there is what they call a tap root. It is a root in terms of sucking up the nourishment that comes out of the earth. When you begin to read God's word, the word begins to take a hold of you. But if you let it tap into that spiritual realm, you can draw from his nutrients that will sustain you through every trial and every tribulation that you're going through. Are y'all with me on this? Oh, you didn't come to hear a farmer today. You didn't come to hear a preacher today. I'm sowing seed so you'll understand how God's word works. Lord have mercy. When the tap root has tapped into the soul, it speaks to the plant on the lower surface of the earth. And what's going on underneath has a lot going on on the top. Are y'all with me on this? When you live right on the inside, it's going to reflect on the outside. And if the root is holy, then so is the fruit. You see, some of us are so busy judging and looking at somebody else. And the reason why we judge and look at somebody else is because we don't understand why they're not bearing fruit. What do you mean? If you say you're saved, you're supposed to bear some fruit. You're supposed to be kind. You're supposed to be loving. You're supposed to be gentle. You're supposed to be meek. You're supposed to show a little long suffering. Come on, somebody. 
we ought to see some fruit somewhere. But because we don't see the fruit, we turn into a judgment. We pass judgment because we don't see the fruit. Oh, my God. Some of us need to be delivered. Look around and somebody says, some of us need to be delivered. Oh, my God. We're so busy looking at somebody else's fruit, we don't even see our own fruit. When you go into the supermarket, they don't put the canned goods first. They don't put the bread first. They put nothing but pure fruit up front. So you get your fruit first and foremost. They put the vegetable up front so you can pick out your vegetable. Oh, y'all ain't with me this morning. You see, if the nutrients required at least 16 substance in order for the earth to be fertilized, for in order for you to get 100% yield on what you sow, you got to be able to prepare yourself through whatever you're going through. Somebody said, I need some fertilizer. I need some fertilizer. On my life. Oh, my God. You see, don't get fertilizer mixed up with cow manure. Uh, y'all ain't with me right now. Oh, y'all ain't with me right now. It ain't as bad as it sounds. Come on, somebody. When you take the word of God and you begin to fertilize your life and you begin to use God's word in every area of your life, you begin to see the manifestation of the power of God. You begin to see the power of the Holy Ghost that will move mountains. And sometimes your mind gets so caught up. Sometimes your heart gets so caught up. Sometimes the situation gets unbearable. But if you let the Lord of God find a hiding place, that will bring meat for repentance. They will bring meat for repentance. They will bring fruit for repentance. Let me take my time. Let me take my time. Jesus says here, Psalm 100, verse 9 says, And he said to them, He that has ears, look at somebody and grab both of your ears. Say, I don't have itching ears. I got listening ears. And don't you realize sometimes all people want you to just listen to what they got to say? A good listener is a person just listening to what people got to say. And most people, I can tell you nine out of ten times, both people just want to vent. I, you know, this year has been tricking me. What did you say? Sometimes people just need to talk about what's bothering them. And ain't nothing wrong with that. Come on, somebody. Ain't nothing wrong with venting and telling because if you don't vent, it'll eat you up. It'll mess you up. It'll cause your pressure to go up. Come on, somebody. And sometimes when your pressure gets so high up, it'll cause your pressure to go out. And you will pass out. Nobody don't want no stroke or heart attacks. Come on, somebody. But if you listen to all the mess that's going on in the media, come on, somebody. Your heart will run away with you. Come on, somebody. But Jesus said, if you got ears, you better listen to what I got to say. Amen. Look at somebody say, if you got ears, you, got ears. you better listen yes. to what Jesus has to say. Has to say. Yes. Oh, my Lord. You heard this message before. Yes. In order for you to reap, on, you got to sow. Got to sow. Look at somebody say, in order for you to reap, you have got to sow. Ain't no use of trying to root something if you ain't sold nothing. It ain't no use of you looking in the bread box for some Mexican or some Mississippi or some Missouri mud pie if you ain't putting one in there. Because it ain't there. I can tell you from Jump Street, it ain't going to be there because you ain't put it there. In order for you to get what God got from you, you got to do something. And you got to move out like Habakkuk said, only the just. Shall do what? Shall do what? Oh, come on, somebody. Only the just shall live by faith. Well, you know, when they heard Jesus say this, in verse 10 says, he got out of that little boat. He didn't preach a good sermon to him. All the people standing out there looking at him, watching him. And Jesus, you know, Jesus had a walk that you won't never forget. If you're walking around in heaven one day and you spot somebody that's got a holy walk. Oh, come on, somebody. A walk like nobody else walk. 
you're going to know it's Jesus. When he walked away, and the Bible said in verse 11, uh, they was perplexed. His disciples were perplexed. The twelve asked of him uh, of the parable. In verse 11, he said, and he said to them, unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. See, people are looking all up in the sky everywhere for the kingdom of God, but Jesus said, behold. He said, behold. The kingdom of God comes not with observation. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Look at somebody that said, the kingdom of God is in you. Turn around and somebody that said, the kingdom of God is in you. When you're looking at somebody that's born again, you see the kingdom of God. You see it operating and you see it alive. You see your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. And when you act upon the seed and the words of God, you see the kingdom come alive. Yes. Amen. Verse 12 says, and he says, I gave you this mystery. Uh, but unto them that are without, uh, these things are done in parable. Verse 12 says, as fulfillment of scripture, that they sin, they may see and not perceive. And hearing that they may hear and not understand. Let's say any time they should be converted, born again, saved. Come on, somebody. And whosoever call upon the name of the Lord, whosoever call upon the name of the Lord, whosoever call upon the name of the Lord, upon the of the Lord shall be saved. Somebody say, Jesus! 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 There's a lot of people that are religious, but they don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. He said if they be converted and their sins should be forgiven them, and their sins should be forgiven them. That's why Samuel told the people of God back in his day, I know about your sinfulness. I know about your iniquity. I know about your wrongdoing. I know you made a mess of the city of God, but don't start living for God. Don't stop serving him because sooner or later God going to clean that mess up. Sooner or later God going to clean your life up. Sooner or later God going to straighten things out. Why? Because every time you come here, you'll get nothing but seed. Seeds that will be born again. Seeds that will cause you to live again. Seeds that will cause you to lie, be alive. Mm, mm, mm. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying that he began to tell them. In verse 13, and he said unto them, Know you not the parable? How then will you know all parables? Mm -hmm. If you can figure this one out, ain't nothing going to be hidden from you. Amen. You can figure out the secret to the kingdom of God. Because you realize that whatever going on in your life, all you need to do is take a seed instead of a pill. Yes. Oh, y'all didn't hear that. When you're going through something and you take a pill to relieve you of your pain. Ain't that right? Because your pain is an early warning. I said your pain is an early warning sign that God equipped your body with. And if God made the body, there's something in the word that would equip that body to respond to the word that the power of God would come on your life and relieve you of any stress, relieve you of any anxiety, relieve you of any problem or any issue going on in your life. But you have to take the word as a seed of God and implant it in your heart and live according to God's word. This is not no entertainment. Amen, that's right. Your salvation hinge upon the word of God. Your life hinge upon the word of God. Some people hear the word, let it go in one ear and out the other. They get outside the door like Jesus getting ready to tell them. And the people on the street know you've been over there at the Brethren Watkins Church. I know what kind of preacher he is. I know I might not go to his church. I might watch him on TV on Sunday. I might see him on YouTube. But I don't want to go over there because he requires you to live right. Come on. 
I might go here and there now and then, but I don't want to be a part every Sunday because that's drawing me into holiness. And I'm a little scared of holiness because I heard they got a Holy Ghost in that place over there. Some of y'all got loved ones and relatives. Come on and join church with me on Sunday. No, uh, I'll catch him on TV at 4 o'clock. <laughs> I know where I'm going with this. I'm talking about seeds because you're growing the future. Look at somebody say, you're growing the future. Pastor, what are you saying? Because he says in verse 13, this is a parable. Verse 14 says, uh, the sower soweth the word. Ain't that right? You and I are sores of the word. Ain't that right? And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, when they heard the word, Satan was nearby. That's why, brother, brother Deacon Brown, you got to plead the blood at the glass door. Something hit the glass, and you look around and see who it is. It's Satan trying to get in here, but it ain't no room for him. Oh, come on, somebody. Uh, so you got to be a, a steward at your post. Are y'all with me on this? Uh, uh, he says, but Satan, uh, 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 he says in verse 14, 15, and these that are sown by the wayside where the word is sown, but when they have heard the preaching, the word of God, Satan come immediately. And he taken away the word that was sown in their heart. What did Pastor preach about this morning? He says something about George Washington Carver, and I got to go to the store and get me some peanut butter. <laughs> Am I talking right? And don't forget the jelly I like preserved with my... Y'all ever heard the joke about the grandfather, strawberry, and the baby, the grandbaby strawberry, and the baby strawberry asked, uh, Grandpa, what happened to my mama and daddy? And, and Grandpa said, I'm sad to tell you, your, your, your mama is in a jelly and your daddy is in a jam. <laughs> Never mind, never mind. You'll catch it later on. Some of y'all don't get into what did he say? You see, whatever being preached, there are seeds that are being sown, and the devil knows that I'm preaching the word of God. That's why he wants to attack. And I rebuke and bind him in the name of Jesus because I had a victory in the name of Jesus. And you will hear the word of God. You will acknowledge the word. The word will find a hiding place. The world will fall on good ground. Yes, Lord. And the world will germinate and blossom into a beautiful fruit. Yes. Hallelujah. Look at somebody say, I am a superless. I am a high blossom that God has saved. Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. Satan come and he's stealing out of the heart. You should remember some of these messages and take them and apply them to your heart, apply them to your life. The same way that your cell phone said, oh, guess what? If you want a discount at the any store, all you got to do is receive our app, short for application. When you need a discount in God's storehouse, you got to apply God's word. You got to apply God's word. Come on, somebody. You've been applying all them apps to your phone. Don't you apply the word to your life? <laughs> I told you all of us got built in GPSs. You know what that means. God protect his spirit. 
Everybody got a GPS in their car, or they got one in their car, or uh, they car, automobile, wherever they got to go. You want to get to your destination. But I'm here to tell you, while you're wherever you're trying to get to heaven, you need a built-in GPS. God protect the spirit. God protect the services. Amen. 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 Thank you. Then verse 16 says, and these are they that likewise which are sown on stony ground. Stony ground. Stony ground. Who when they have heard the word, immediately they get excited. They get happy. They receive it with great gladness. And oh, pastor, you preach today. I thought I preached last Sunday and the Sunday before. I don't compare my sermons with this sermon. I just do what God tells me to do. I just sow seed. I'm William Appleseed. Come on, somebody. I'm just sowing seed. I'm Pastor Appleseed. Tell me whatever you want. I'm just trying to sow some seed that you can give a word in you. Then in verse 17 he says, and have no root. You see, if you read the word and don't begin to study it and research it and look into it, you will find out that you won't develop no root. The whole point of a root is to sustain the tree. The whole point of the root is to sustain the seed that it came from, that it can anchor. Yes. Yes. When you come to study God's word, you become anchored in the word of God. And you begin to grow roots that come from your spiritual being, that connect you to the heavenly father. That when the enemy comes, he won't move you. You know it, and I know it. You can pull a plant up by its roots. But you go out and try to pull a tree up. Come on, somebody. It ain't coming up. Come on, somebody. And if you try to get it up, you realize they cut it down first, and then they go after the root. Satan is after your roots. Are y'all with me? I ain't talking about witchcraft. I'm not talking about roots that the tea reader gives you. I'm not talking about going to somebody to poison somebody. But I'm talking about being rooted and grounded in the word of God. Well, verse 17 says, and have no root in them, and so they endure for a little while. They look okay. They sound okay. But the minute affliction shows up, somebody accused them of going over to the church. I heard you got saved. I heard you got sanctified. I heard you got baptized with the Holy Ghost. You want to puff of this wreath? I got some Dr. McGiver Cuddy. I got some Tango Ray. Don't y'all get me started. And then they'll tell you a wild joke. Didn't you know that, that beer can make you wise? Who told you that? It made Budweiser. <laughs> never mind, never mind. I'm, I'm going to get with you sooner or later. You're going to figure me out sooner or later. What are you talking about? All I'm trying to tell you, oh, come on and have some Henderson. Come on, somebody. Oh, we can smoke. I heard a guy say the other day, we can smoke weed for everywhere now. They didn't pass the law. And they blow that smoke up in your face. Come on, somebody. And some of y'all, instead of you getting out of the smoke way, you go and suck up it all. And next thing you know, you feel like a kite. And then you realize you're a kite without a tail. Never mind, never mind, never mind. Whew. Oh, boy. Lord, help me with this. Immediately when persecution and affliction rise, and they are, when the words say, they immediately are offended because they call, somebody called you a devil. Or they say you're no good, but you know when God saved you, 
Come on, somebody. What I love about the Lord, when I first, is a scripture that's always quoted, and I love it every time I hear it. The Bible says that God so loved the world. Not only did he give his only begotten son, that whosoever lay believe in him shall not, not die, but shall live. But the part I love the most is that he loved us so much that he commanded his love towards us even while we were yet sinners. Even while you were living in sin and doing wrong, God still loved you. What greater love? What greater love? And then verse 18 says, and these are they which sown among the thorns. That's why some folks are thorny. Some folks are superless. And some folks are thorny. I know some of y'all are thinking, well, she's a thorny. I'm a thorn. Two thorns together, and we're going to be pricking each other. <laughs> never mind, never mind. You be fighting in churches, fighting in ministries. I mean, I'm hearing stuff to my ears. Come on, somebody. Not to reveal, but I'm telling you, you ain't seen what's going yet to come on the earth. Jesus said, me and heart will fail them. And if you're not rooted and grounded in the word of God, any wind or doctrine that comes, any erroneous teaching will come. You will go after that teacher and say it's the word of God, but the devil is a liar and the father of it. The word said, let every man and every devil be a liar, but let God's word be true. These are they which sown among the thorns, such as they hear the word. I like Pastor Watkin, but I don't like Evangelist Watkin. Well, Evangelist and Pastor are one. And you can't take one without the other. I didn't hear too many amens. But I ain't going nowhere and I ain't looking for nobody. Come on, somebody. See, people don't want to ride this marriage out. People don't want to ride this relationship out. Long as things are going that way, all well and good. But when all hell breaks loose, come on, somebody. When you got to pay the bills, come on, somebody. When you got to get out there and labor, somebody don't want to do nothing for you. I'm mad. I'm upset. I just want to go to the grocery store. I'm going to get some bread and milk. And they show up 15 years later. They heard the word. Amen. Come on, somebody. The word, ain't nothing wrong with the word. The word is a seed that's sown among those, and when if it don't fall on good ground, it'll fall among the thorns. Okay. Mm-hmm. 19. If I can't get no amen, give me some mm-hmm. Can I get a witness? And the, and the cares, uh, verse 19 says, and the cares, your rent, your car note, your insurance, your son, your daughter, your brother, your sister, your grandchild, uh, the people down the street around the corner, they mad at you. And the cares of this world, because you can't get what you got, and others got it because they want it, and they got it because they can work for it, and you can't get it. You get mad with them, and you go, wait a minute, I'm sorry. I, I got kind of carried away. The cares of this world. Everybody said, beware, beware. Of, the cares of the cares of these worlds. Of these worlds. Amen. 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 The cares of this world will carry you away. Yes. Will get you so mad and so upset. What mama doing? What grandmama doing? Why are you always doing this? Why is she always doing that? He ain't never home. He don't never answer the phone. Always mad and got an attitude. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. See, riches can grow wings like a bird. Fly away and you can't catch it. Come on, somebody. But God has blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Have salvation. Purchase of God. What is it? Born of the Spirit. 
When you're washing in blood, when you let the seed in the world wash you and cleanse you and make you whole, he said, ask what you will. Yes, he will. And it shall be done. Well, wait a minute. And the cares of the world and the seed for the riches and the lust, the lust, the lust, the lust. What's in the middle of lust? Oh, us. <laughs> Wait a minute. Are y'all looking what I'm looking at? Some people put us in the middle of lust. And the lust of other things, the lust of other things. Look at somebody that said the lust of other things. Enter in and choke. Choke the word and it become unfruitful. How many have ever been choked? Can't even tell the truth in church. Some of y'all been choked on a regular basis. See, when I say have you been choked, you can choke on a drop of water. You got a, you got uh, any kind of uh, uh, sign is you can choke on your own salon. I mean, I'm going to ask it again. How many ever been choked? Okay, you get my point. I didn't say put your arm around somebody's neck. Because that, that takes on a whole different assault and battery. Okay, all right, all right. I want you to say, but when the enemy comes in, he is like a thorn. He chokes the word out because of your cares and because of your lust. It chokes the word and the fruit that you thought you were going to bear come to be unfruitful. Praise God. This is Pastor Watkins from Community Revival and Outreach Ministries. I trust that you enjoyed that wonderful service we just uh, had, and I trust the Lord that it touched your heart and your spirit, and it also inspired your soul. But beyond just listening to a message, we also ask you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And how you do that, you just simply ask and bow before Christ. And if you're willing to lay hands upon your TV or bow your heads right where you are or sitting, if you just bow your head with me and we'll pray the prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That you forgive us of all our sins and have mercy upon our soul. And that not only you save us, O oh Lord, from our sins, but, O oh Lord, that you would sanctify our hearts and sanctify our souls as well as, O oh Lord, baptize us with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. We accept you, O oh Lord, into our hearts and our life. We confess our sins and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead. And by believing and accepting this, O oh Lord, we claim to be saved in his holy name. We give thanks and praise for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I trust the Lord that your heart is fixed with the Lord and that your blessing will be assured and that you'll come out and fellowship with us. And if not with us, your, your own local church in your area and that God will be a blessing to you until we see you again. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.